Okay, so we are officially getting into chapter 10, which is um, uh, the unit of statistics. And to start off chapter 10, 10.1, we're going to talk about normal distribution. And we touched a little bit on that uh, in our review, but we're going to go more in depth today about normal distribution. So um, to understand the word distribution, right here, the word distribution, so statistics is the mathematical branch of it's the branch of mathematics where you collect information, you organize the information, you analyze and you can make inferences or predictions about the information. Now the information that is collected can distribute in different ways. So basically what distribution means is um, it's a way to organize organize info um, and see center and spread of the information to see center and spread. Now last time we talked about different ways to measure center and me different ways to measure the spread. So to measure the center of a distribution of, of data we could use um, mean, median, mode, and spread. There was range, five number summary, and standard deviation. Okay. So again, and then there were different shapes that it, a distribution could take on. It doesn't always take on the same shape, but there was a ske there can be skewed information where the information or the data leans more left or to the right, or there was information that was more symmetrical. So this right here whenever it's symmetrical this is a normal distribution this is what we call a normal so three things you should think of whenever we say normal distribution okay so when we say normal distribution one you should think of a bell curve or bell shape bell shape curve. A normal distribution uh, takes on a bell-shaped curve just like what you see right here. So this is uh, a, a normal distribution. Uh, if you gather information and the information that you've collected, gathered, and organized, if it looks bell-shaped then you have a normal curve. Now, second thing about normal distribution that you should be aware of and that you should know is that the total area um, under the curve, so total area is equal to 1, and this means, uh, so total area under the curve. Three, it's symmetrical. So these are three things that you should think of whenever we, whenever you hear the word normal distribution. You should think that, okay, so the information gathered is bell-shaped. The area underneath the curve, so in this case right here, this would be the area underneath the curve. This area underneath the curve is equal to 1. And you should also be thinking that it's symmetrical. So symmetrical about the top of the curve. Okay. Now, at the center, um, I'm just going to box this off, separate to additional information that we need to be aware of. So at the center of the curve, now, if you remember last time, we said that the center, whenever it's, uh, whenever your information is normally distributed, the best means to measure the center um, is to use the mean, which is this right here. So the center is the mean. Okay. Um, and to measure the spread. You use standard deviation. So standard deviation. Okay. 
So if you look at these bell-shaped curves down here, so the total area underneath the curve is 1. Or you can basically say that all the information, uh, so the area underneath the curve is a representation of 100% of the data collected. So all this area here represents 100% of the information. So that's why we say that the area is 1. Okay. Now, within one standard deviation of the mean, so here is our mean. Within one standard deviation of our mean, includes 68% of our data. So this area right here, within one standard information of our data, if it's in one, uh, if it's within one percent of our, or if it's in one standard deviation of our mean, then it will make up 68% of our data. Okay, so that's something that we should note. That. Um, uh, so about 68% oops 68% of the area is within one standard deviation of the mean or mu. Okay. Now within two standard deviations you have uh there is ninety five percent. Okay, so about ninety five percent of the area is within two standard deviations of the mean and about 99.7 percent is within three standard deviations so about 99.7 uh, percent um, within three standard deviations of the mean. Okay, now to break that down just a little bit further, if 68% right here, so if this is 68% within one standard deviation of our mean, well that means because it's symmetrical about this point, that means within one standard deviation to the left and to the right, is 34 percent because 68 divided by 2 would be 34 and then you can do the math similarly if you keep doing the math if uh, you know that within two standard deviation that's 95 percent and you know that this right here is 68 percent well then if you find the difference and divide by 2 you'll get that 13.5 percent is within um, 1 and 2 standard deviation and so on and so forth. Okay, so again, we said that 99.7 percent of data is within here. So that means whatever information, so whatever data is outside of three standard deviations of the mean, is going to be the difference from 99.7 to one. So that's just going to be what's left over. So 0.15 percent. Okay. Now, what this basically means is what this helps us understand, it helps us so we can find probability so of some, some information. So, for example, if this is what a, the test scores look like, if, our, if we took a test and we had all this information, let's say that, you know, this was 100%, and then over here was, I don't know, we could say, uh, zero, um, no, let's do 60 percent. And this mean, we'll say, was um, 80 percent. Okay, so what this means is that the mean here, this would mean that the average of students scored 80 percent on a test. Okay, that is the mean. So what that means is, 
is that right here, the area between here and to the end of the curve, this means that half the class scored between 80 and 60 percent, while the other half of the class scored between 80 and 100 percent, because that's the area underneath the curve. But then let's say that we wanted to find out, let's say we found the standard deviation, and the standard deviation, um, we could find out how many people scored within this margin of the standard deviation. This right here represents the percentage of students that scored within this um, standard deviation. So it helps us know the, the, the percentage of where people scored. Okay. Now, that leads us to our assignment, which mainly just has to do with all the information that we just had. So make sure you have those tables, those uh, visuals in um, handy. Okay. So for each question, it says to construct a normal dis distribution curve and label the horizontal axis, then answer the question. Okay. So it says that the mean life of a tire, so if we have a tire, the life of that tire, so how long that tire lasts, is about thir uh, 30,000 kilometers. So after about 30,000 kilometers, the average tire will probably be... Um, done. It would be uh, out of use. Um, the standard deviation is 2,000 kilometers. Okay, So let's gather that information here on this, on this uh, bell curve. So because the mean is 30,000, so 30,000 for the mean, okay, so that's the, the mean right there. And standard deviation is 2,000. Now again, so th it's the average tire, right? The average tire is about that much. But some tires might last more, some tires might last a little bit less. Um, and the standard deviation given to us is 2,000, okay? So this would be um, 28,000. So if it's a, if the one standard deviation is 2,000, then 30,000 minus 2,000 would be 28,000, okay? So that's within one. Within two would be twenty-six thousand, and then twenty-four thousand, and then to the right would be thirty-two thousand, thirty-four thousand, and then thirty-six thousand. Okay. So again, this is one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations. And this contains, uh, within three standard deviations, is 99.7% of our data. So it says 68% of all tires will have a life between what and what. So we know that from our bell curves, that within one standard deviation of the mean is 68% of our data. So that means right here, between one standard deviation, this is where that data lies. So let me just fill this in for us. So 68% of tires right here. So that has to be within 28,000 and 32,000. Okay, so 68% of the tires will have a life between 28,000 and 32,000 because 68% of our data lies within um, one standard deviation. And then 95% of tires will have a life between, 95% uh, of our data is between two standard deviations. So that would be going out to here. So this would include all the data between here and the mean. So that's going to be between 20 and 34. So 20,000 kilometers and 34,000 kilometers. And then it says, what percent of tires will have a life that exceeds um, 26,000? Okay. So let me get rid of this stuff right here. So 26,000 um, is right here. So it wants to know what percent of tires will have a life that exceeds that. So this is again, like I said, this is a probability. This helps us determine probability, and the area under the curve is the probability. 
Okay, so what is the probability that the tire will last? Will that if we have a tire, if we bought a tire from who was ever selling these tires, what's the probability that it will last at least? Um, it will last at least twenty-six thousand miles. Okay. So we know that the total area under the curve is one, right? It's one. Now to find the rest of that, all I have to do is subtract this tail right here. Because the entire tail, the entire area under the curve is 100, so if I subtract this area, I will get the percentage of tires that will last longer than 26,000. Now if we refer back to our table, now one second before I go back to that. So the 26,000 is within one and two standard deviations. So let's go back to our table. So two standard deviations is right here. So we want to subtract away these percentages. So we take 2.35 plus 0.15. So 2.35 plus 0.15 and that's 2.5. So let's go back here. We want to subtract away 2.5 away from 1. Or since we're talking about percentage, that would be 1 minus 0.025. Uh, so 1 minus 0.025. and I get 97.5 okay so that's 97.5 percent that will have uh, is a chance that a tire will have a life that exceeds 26,000 kilometers so if a company next question if a company Um, purchased 2,000 tires. If a company purchased 2,000 tires, how many tires would you expect to last more than 28,000 kilometers? Okay, so in this question, what we need to do is find the percentage that a tire lasts more than 28. So here is 28,000, and so the area under the curve above that is what we're trying to see so what percentage of the area is this right here which means again we have to take one and subtract away so uh, because the area under the curve is one we want to subtract away this area right here okay now we already know that within right here this was 2.5% and this within um, this standard this uh, much right here if we go back and look at our table the percentage between one and two so this is one standard deviation and two standard deviations the percentage of data between uh, in this section is 13.5 percent so let's do 2.5 plus 13.5 Okay, so we get 15% of the data right there. So 15%, so 1 minus 0 .0, um, uh, 0.15, uh, no, 0 0.15, minus 0.15, that's 15%. Okay, so we go here, we do 1 minus 0.15, we get 0 0.85 0 0.85 which is about 85 percent so this means that 85 percent of all tires will are expected to have a life more than 28,000 kilometers so what that means is if I buy if a company purchases 2,000 tires 85 percent of those tires will last are expected to last um, more than uh, uh, 28,000 kilometers. So I need to multiply this 
um, by 85 uh, percent because I want to find 85 percent of that which is same thing as 2000 times by 0.85 so when I do that so 2000 times by 0.85 I get 1700 so this means about 1700 tires if your company purchased 20 or 2000 tires about 85 percent of those tires or 1700 tires are expected to last more than 28,000 kilometers okay so again most of these are pretty much just asking the same thing um, but uh, let's go ahead and do number two okay um, the shelf life of a particular dairy product is normally distributed with a mean of 12 days and a standard deviation of 3. So we have a mean of 12 days, standard deviation of 3. So that's 15, 18, 21, 12 minus 3 is 9, and then 6 and 3. Okay, so this is how um, the shelf life of a particular dairy product is distributed with an average of them lasting about 12 uh, and a standard deviation of 3. So about what percent of the products lasts between 9 and 15 days? Okay, so let's look at this. So 15 days right here. 9 and 15 though. So it's asking how much lies between these two right here. Now, 9 and 15 are both within one standard deviation of our mean. And looking at our graphs from before, if it's in within one of the mean in both directions, that means 68%. So about 68% lasts between 9 and 15 days. About what percent? Uh, last between 12 and 15 days. So between 12 and 15, now that's within one standard deviation but only in one direction and so that's actually going to be 34 percent which is half of 60. And what percent of project, uh, products lasts six days or less? So six days right here, six days or less. Now, um, six days is within two standard deviations, but it wants to know after that. So if we go back to our notes here, so two standard deviations, that's so the data that lasts, so that way, that direction, so that's 2.35 plus that, which was 2.5. So about 2.5% will last less than six days. And what percent of the product, product lasts more than um, 15 days? So that's here. So what percentage of the area is this right here? So um, that's within, so 15 is within one standard deviation. So this is one standard deviation. So it's 2.5 plus 13.5, which should be um, 15 point uh, or 15 percent. So about 15 percent of the product should last more than 15 days. Okay. Um, now that should pretty much give you a good start on this. Now, if you have any other questions, just make sure to reach out to me, like if any of the numbers don't seem to be adding up. Um, now, not all of these have a bell curve or something like that, so I recommend that you have an extra sheet of paper where you can draw your own bell curve, where you can measure the mean, you can measure the standard deviations, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions on any of these, um, just make sure to email me or come see me sometime after class.